Afternoon folks, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to uh, add to the land nav series something I've just recently acquired uh, as far as a skill and that's using your compass as a protractor. Now many of you know you know come shoot April or May of this year 2015 I'll have 19 years of military service. I have quite a bit of experience in land navigation. I've taught it numerous times throughout my career and I teach it here at the Woodsman School as well. Um, but you know I've talked about most of the things that I'm familiar with and good at through the course of my land nav series uh, and again this one being pretty new to me uh, so I wanted to share that with you pass on the knowledge if you will uh, just something to put in your toolbox and uh, keep with you it actually allows you to carry one less piece of gear and it's it's pretty simple so uh, we're going to use our compass as a protractor and I'm going to show you how to do that right now alright folks so uh, what we're going to do just hypothetically speaking here the tip of my pencil here is that a small little pond or lake that's not named on this map but we're gonna go from the outlet of that lake to the inlet of a big lake uh, right here just off the map and I'll zoom out so you guys can see that in a minute but it's Great East Lake so we're gonna go from the outlet to the inlet of these two lakes and I'm going to show you how to do that using your map uh, your compass as a protractor now in past videos I've showed different protractors the military version uh, one I got from Staples and, and so on on how to use that to get an azimuth from your map to put on your compass and vice versa so if you remember right from the earlier videos if you can see these contour lines they're all pointing up to this lake right here so what that means again from past videos all these contour lines coming together and pointing up towards this lake means this is a draw so the water is going to run from this lake obviously downhill we have a hilltop here we have a couple right here so the water is obviously going to run from high ground to low ground so the draw and these contour lines point up upstream and uphill so the water is running from this lake or pond here downhill into the great east lake so the outlet of this particular pond or lake would be right through this draw which over time is nothing more than erosion if you think about it so the water runoff goes downhill so here's our outlet of this unnamed pond or lake it runs downhill down this draw right into Great East Lake in which case that would be our inlet and that would start right here at the end of this uh, stream river whatever you want to call that mountain runoff or what have you so we're gonna put a tick mark here <clears throat> with our pencil so that's the beginning of the inlet to Great East Lake right here at the edge of the uh, unnamed pond or lake we're gonna put another tick mark right at the beginning in which case again is our outlet so the water runs out outlet down this draw and they actually name that as Scribner Brook so it's a brook down this draw into Great East Lake and here is our inlet for Great East Lake so we're gonna draw a line through that 
in which we can get our azimuth from and then we're going to talk about how to use our compass as a protractor to get that azimuth. Stay with me. Okay, so just using my right in the rain notebook here, I'm going to intersect these two tick marks or lines here and just draw a straight line. So depending on what way we were traveling, either from the inlet of Great East Lake to the outlet of the unnamed lake, or vice versa, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, that is our straight line azimuth, and there's different things we can do. We can get straight line distance from that, our, our azimuth, back azimuth, uh, magnetic azimuth and, and so on but uh, I'm gonna zoom you guys out for a second here again here's the unnamed pond or lake up in the mountains here and the runoff goes downstream through Scribna Brook to the inlet one of the inlets because there's numerous ones for Great East Lake but this is one of them to the inlet of Great East Lake and I'm gonna give you you know the bigger picture of what that looks like here in a second when I zoom out and then we'll go from there okay so again here's our unnamed pond or lake going downhill downstream which is Scribna Brook right into the one of the inlets of Great East Lake uh, and again there's numerous ones there's another one right here that comes down uh, and there's probably a couple over here because this is all high ground so they all run into Great East Lake and somewhere I'm assuming down here is an outlet or two but we're not going to get into that what we want to do is use our compass as a protractor to get in this scenario we'll say from the inlet of Great East Lake or the eastern I'm sorry, the western inlet of Great East Lake to this unnamed lake up Scribna Brook here. So we're going to get that azimuth using nothing but our compass and using that as a protractor. Alright, so again, there's different ways to do this. If we had an actual protractor, we could just lay it on here and get our azimuth not a big deal uh, there's a bunch of different compasses out there uh, and they're the way to use them is different uh, what I have here is a silver guide compass uh, it's it's pretty reminiscent of the silver ranger as well You know, so not, not overly difficult to use, but it's not a Kaminga compass, which we use in the military, and it's certainly different. But using this compass, again, it's a guide model 426 uh, silver compass. Uh, the silver ranger compass is pretty much identical as far as how you use it. So how we get our azimuth, right here using our compass as a protractor again is, there's different ways to do that we could use a protractor or we could use our compass the first thing we would have to do is orient our map to north once we orient the map north we would slide our compass up and down one of these north south lines until that azimuth line dissected our compass at the midpoint right in the center now again your map would have to be oriented north with the compass to do that and where the azimuth came out would give you your degree reading uh, and that would be your map azimuth or map bearing uh, depending on where you're at 
in the country or the world, you would have to then go to the declination diagram and either add or subtract your declination to get your magnetic bearing. Okay? One of the easiest ways to do this, in which again I just learned recently, would be to take the edge of your compass and put it right along your azimuth line in the direction of travel which is this way so I take the edge of my compass I would line that up and then there's only one other step that I have to do in order to use my compass as a protractor and get my bearing and I'm going to show you a close-up of this and hopefully you'll be able to see it but with these types of compasses inside the bezel ring if you can see those lines there's red on the top which is north and then black on the bottom all we have to do is line those lines up with our north south lines so let me get back to the map so again if I line the edge of my compass up on this azimuth that we drew now the top of your map is always north so in this case my north is this way so I need to turn my bezel ring to where my north lines up with these north south lines on my map so my edge of my compass is lined up on my bearing or my azimuth that we drew now I'm going to spin my bezel ring to where these lines inside of it line up perpendicularly to my north-south lines on the map. Once I've done that, the direction of travel or the tick mark at the top of my compass, which is always, always the direction of travel, is going to give me my bearing. So essentially what we've just done there is totally negated this needle here. And this is an old guide tradition uh, as well as just an old timer tradition before protractors even came out. They would take their map at their favorite hunting spot or whatever it is, lay it on the hood of their truck, which was metal, <laughs> and they didn't need to worry about this magnetic needle because we're negating that using this technique. So again, lay the edge of our compass on our azimuth that we drew line up our north south lines in our bezel ring with north on the top of our map and the tick mark at the top of our compass is our azimuth so we don't need to worry about this needle and you can spin this map any which way you want and because we negated that needle coming into effect, the answer is always right. So that's, that's key and that, that's a good technique. And uh, honestly, you don't even need a protractor anymore. So that's one less piece of kit you have to carry. If you were doing it vice versa, say we're going from the unknown lake up here, back towards Great East Lake you would do exactly the same thing except you would spin your compass around Let me get that out of the way again lining up the edge of your compass on this azimuth but direction of travel right so we're going this way now and then you do exactly the same thing if you can see, hopefully you can see, north on my compass is right here right now. But north on the map is the opposite. So again, I need to line that up on my map. So I'm going to spin this bezel ring until those lines in the bezel ring line up with my north-south lines. And north has to be to the top of your map, which is always north on your map. Once I've done that, again, the little tick mark 
at the top of my compass is giving me my azimuth or my bearing and we're going this way now pretty pretty simple concept all right folks so again using your compass as a protractor again allows you to carry one less piece of kit not that a protractor weighs anything uh, and of all the videos I've ever heard that said in you know for for what it weighs and the amount of room it takes up uh, it's nothing it's very very flat you could put it in the top of your hat and not even know it's there but uh, with this technique it, it's not necessary to carry one uh, and again this is a new technique to me that I, I've just recently learned uh, I think it's a good one I wish I had known that a lot longer but as always you know as I learn and progress here I like to share that with you guys uh, that's to me what it's all about so using your compass as a protractor uh, key in my opinion so hopefully I explained that and showed that in a way that you can understand it uh, I'm sure I'm gonna get questions in the comment area and uh, I'll do my best to answer those so thanks for joining me for another one guys and I will see you soon with another one take care